of its approach and its origins. Whereas if you're physios, you might have a similar technique called PNF, like proprioceptive neuromuscular. Uh, but it's not the same. But uh, you know, people from the outside looking in would, would say, well, that's PNF. And then somebody said, well, that's another type of technique. You might call it a mass technique and this and that. But, but it's an MET approach is what I'm using. Now, what we can do first of all is have it so most of the upper arm is on the couch. And you can cradle the elbow. So we're going to start where we finished, if you like. So I finished on the rotators. So we'll start on the rotators. With any the external rotation was okay. But imagine she had maybe 45 degrees. Because some people have. They can turn the arm. Is it from the capsule? Is it from the subscap? In reality, it's probably a capsule issue rather than a... But even so, if you've got a lady where we can't externally rotate, by activating the muscles, because the muscles are part of the capsule, it will influence the position of the capsule. If you've got a frozen shoulder, rather than start at 90 degrees because they won't like it, you can maybe start 70 degrees or 60 or 50. You can start there, but then already this position, they might not like it, so you might want to be starting in this position here. But it's a similar sort of technique. So we start in this position. Let's say there's the bind. We find the position of bind. We ask the patient to turn their arm this way off you go, for about 20% effort of 10 to 12 seconds contraction. There's no point saying to your patient, can you internally rotate the humerus using the subscapularis? Because most therapists would go, what do you say? Now, after 10 seconds, relax, watch for what I do now. It's my technique, a little bit of traction, and I call it the wiggle technique. What that means is, Rather than just going straight into external rotation, I will wiggle the humerus, well, the actual elbow in this case, flexion and extension, whilst I'm tractioning the humerus, whilst I'm encouraging external rotation. That feels okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then from there, that's the second point of bind. So what I'd like to do now is breathe in. And as you breathe out, off you go again. So she is activating the internal rotator for 10 seconds. So this is activating the subscap. Subscap anatomically, excuse my fingers, is directed here. So we can treat this by doing another technique, which maybe we can do after. Relax, relax, let go. Breathe in. And as I breathe out, and I normally breathe with them, a little bit of traction, a bit of a wiggle. And if I get to 90 degrees in the second time, I would hold that for about 25 seconds and the body remembers the new position. And that would be a, what we call a PIR of MET, post isometric relaxation of the subscapularis, trying to encourage normal range of motion. Are we okay now? Yep. Bring the arm back. We know Amy is tight going the other way. We know look how tight she is here, there. It is better done, most of you will probably treat this area at the back because there are. When you have a tightness of the infraspinatus, there will be trigger point development within the soft tissues. So it's probably better to loosen it, to massage it, to trigger point it, to acupuncture it, then we do the MET at the end. But it's not part of this course to do the soft tissue work, it's a different course. Um, but from here, so you know, you all know how to do that and trigger points, I'm sure. So let's go where we are, look where she's binding. Nought degrees, that's where she's binding. She's not, look, there's no movement there. What we can do now from here is get the patient to turn the arm this way. Off you go. So my patient is externally rotating the humerus for 10 seconds. After the 10 seconds, I don't tend to, to look at, I do, if I've got a clock in front of me like this one, I probably would actually go for the specific time. Relax, I go. Take a breath in. And as she breathes in, breathes out, a bit of traction. Watch the technique now, okay? You'll probably find me improving this one quite quick. So I'm gonna go into internal rotation, try to prevent the humeral head from lifting. It's almost like a, I'm trying to confuse the body rather than forcing it, I'm just trying to encourage this internal rotation. We've already improved that. Now from there, I hold it for a few seconds. When you're ready, off you go again. So my patient is intern, externally rotating. For the appropriate time. Relax, 20% effort. Take a breath. And as I breathe out, traction, bit of a wiggle, and I'm trying to encourage, it's nice and slow, nice and controlled, but I'm trying to encourage the internal rotation, okay? Mm. That feels okay, yeah? Yeah. 
rather than just forcing it into the internal. Let's just do it once more, take a breath, and off we go. So I'm gonna do it three times with this one because it is pretty tight. I always think if you can, if you've got a problem with your shoulder and you can normalize these ranges, you probably find maybe a lot of shoulder pain will ease off. And relax. If it's chronic and it's been there for many years, well, maybe many months and maybe drifting into a year or two, which it can be, then it might be other stuff going on. As in, you know, what I talked about with the glutes and pathology in the shoulder and coming from the neck and, and all the rest of it. Okay, so from there, I'm trying to get towards the 70 degrees. I think I'm pretty close. But each time, not allowing our tumoral head to lift. All right? So that's, a, that's better than it was. Okay, so from that area. I'm not saying how long it lasts, because you have to think about what's the causative factor of that. But I think if you've got a, a stone in your hand, or ball in your hand, or javelin in your hand, and you're throwing it, Amy would be okay to set up. But when she lets go, and it wants to follow through, my patient will be restricted on that internal rotation because she's restricted. Mm. And you could easily tear the supraspinatus because you're not allowing the foot in the natural rotations. Mm. And that's what that Professor Kocher in London, and he's the orthopod surgeon, he will do that main test. And on you, you would have been positive on, on probably on both sides. Come over to your right a little bit, please. So the next phase is pe the pectoralis, come over a bit more. So now the arm is, has to clear. The arm has to clear the couch. Now, the sternal fibres, if you're looking at the scapular plane here, is where you'd lengthen the sternal fibres of the pecs. The clavicular fibres will be more in this plane. Okay, but she's not particularly tight there, can you see that? So she's particularly tight, come in this way, there, there's the find. Hold your arm, hold it, hold it. So my patient's doing the work. So she's doing the work for 10 seconds. MET is quite a simple approach, because they do it. <laughs> After the 10 seconds, relax, breathe. And as my patient breathes out, I can just slowly lower the arm, encouraging a little bit of lengthening. So that's quite a nice way, because you've got the weight of the arm and you've got the gravity to assist you. So that could be technique number one, hold your arm, hold it, hold it. And let's say it's 10 seconds, relax, breathe. And as they breathe out, I can lower it down this way. Do you favor? Mm -hmm. Some people will feel this irritating on the shoulder. You might have to try on your right side to see what's on yours, so mm -hmm. to see what it's like. Um, you have to maybe modify it a little bit. If you don't like it, what I mean by that is, yes, it could irritate. Yes, you could feel it in the arm because you're stretching the nerve. So you could take the median nerve out of the equation. You could bend the elbow. And you can do this technique, hand onto my elbow, my hand on her elbow, for a man woman for obvious reasons, and just about the pec fibers there. This hand on hers. Look at my leg, I can control how much abduction, can you see that? How much abduction mm -hmm. and how much horizontal extension to get a stretch of that muscle there. Push up towards the ceiling, please. So she's pushing now, so I'm not irritating the median nerve. You can rotate this way as well to slacken off a brachial plexus if you felt it's appropriate. From there, relax, breathe. And as my patient breathes in and breathes out, my hand on her hand just to stabilize the origin, and I can slowly, I'll be careful on this one. Is that okay? You feel it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite a good lengthening for the end. And also the capsule as well of the shoulder. If you felt it appropriate to stretch a capsule, there is. Because it is part of a ligamentous system. So we can. But no doubt, it is better. So obviously, if you're able to, and it's awkward for man, woman, etc but maybe a little bit of soft tissue work on that area. You can almost lock into the tissue and lengthen through that and change in angles, that sort of thing. So you can do the pecs that way. Have a lie on your side, facing that way, please. Uh, rest your head now. The latissimus, people struggle a lot on this one. Arm over, please. Uh, be careful, you, the two ladies here for the shoulder, be careful on this one. Look at my hand, bring the hand through, through and over, through and over. The sand on the crest of the pelvis, I know you tightened here, I know you tightened on the other side, but so from there, so there's a bias, a natural bind, okay, in your shoulder, mm -hmm. yeah. Elbow, lower back, can you pull towards your lower back, please? So she's activating this, the terrace, the lat is next to it. So we're working these two synergistically together. 10 seconds of the adduction, so elbow towards your lower back, relax, breathe. And as she breathes out, you can stabilize the crest of the innominate. And then from there, I can then lengthen through that, okay? Mm -hmm. You feel that? Yeah. Okay, so I can lengthen the lattice in the side. I can change my hand position. 
I can work onto the lower ribs, I can come onto the crest, not crest, the um, uh, inferior angle of the scapula area, but this is a common one where I can do this. There's a few variations on this, as in you can position the leg, you can bring the leg back and down, you can change the plinth as in dropping it down, and so on. So this is quite a nice one for lats, as long as it doesn't irritate the shoulder because it can impinge quite easily on that. Last one, pec minor. Can you come towards me, please? Uh, your right side was tighter, so it's fine to do that. Rest your head. You just rest on. Now, pec minor on the right. Look at my hand. Hand through. Rest. Hand on the shoulder. Stabilize the T-spine. Slowly start to retract until there's a natural point of bind from there. Can you slowly take a breath in? And on the out breath, push your shoulder into my hand. So she's pushing forward into my hand here for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is longer than you imagine. Because <laughs> everybody does it for like three or four. And relax, breathe. And that probably wasn't 10. Breathe out, breathe out, let go, let go, let go. So I'm stabilizing the T spine and I'm just trying to retract the shoulder. Some people feel it, not everybody. Depends how particularly tight you are. And off you go again. So she, my patient is pushing. And relax, take a breath. And as she breathes out, I can retract it this way. A nice technique is this. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, if you slowly, imagine you've got a 10 minutes piece between your shoulder blades. You're going to slowly squeeze the 10 pen. So she's going to reach to squeeze. And you might find that's a bit more effective. Do you feel that or not? Mm. Yeah. Not for everybody. The idea of that one is the patient is retracting, so she's activating the rhomboids. As she activates the rhomboids, it then causes a reciprocal inhibition into the pec minor to relax, allowing it to lengthen even more. So that would be a PIR into an RI technique of MET. Any questions on that?